We are used to thinking of stars as something huge, bright, and hot. It is difficult to imagine stars whose temperature is lower than that of a cup of tea. Moreover, these are not just some hypothetical objects that no one has ever found, but really existing ones, confirmed by astronomical observations. But before we move on to this unusual star, let's understand what types of stars it belongs to and why its surface temperature is so low. There are various classifications of stars. One of them is the spectral classification. According to this classification, stars are distinguished by their spectra. Spectral classifications are used in astronomy and astrophysics. A qualitative description of the observed spectrum allows estimating important astrophysical characteristics of the star, such as the effective temperature of its surface, luminosity, and in some cases, the peculiarities of its chemical composition. The Hertzsprung-Russell diagram is also used for star classification. It shows the relationship between absolute magnitude, luminosity, spectral class, and surface temperature, corresponding to modern ideas about stellar evolution. Surprisingly, stars on this diagram are not randomly placed. They form well-distinguished regions. Most stars on this diagram are located within a diagonal strip running from the upper left corner to the lower right. This strip is called the main sequence. Stars located on it are called main sequence stars, and our sun belongs to these stars, located in the part corresponding to yellow stars. At the upper part of the diagram are the brightest and hottest stars, and at the bottom right are the dimmest and therefore the longest living stars. Main sequence stars are in the most stable phase of their existence, or as it is commonly said, in the phase of life. According to the theory of stellar evolution, when the hydrogen supplies in the core of a star are exhausted, it leaves the main sequence, deviating to the right. At the same time, the temperature of the star always drops, and its size rapidly increases. A series of increasingly rapid movements of the star across the diagram begins. Separately, to the right and above the main sequence, there is a group of stars with very high luminosity, but relatively low temperatures. These are the so-called red stars. Giants and supergiants are cold stars that are much brighter than main sequence stars of the same temperature. One square centimeter of the surface of a cold star emits relatively little energy per second. However, the high overall luminosity of the star is explained by its large surface area. The star must be very large. Giants are called stars whose diameter is more than 200 times the diameter of the sun. Similarly, we can consider the lower left part of the diagram. There are hot stars with low luminosity. Since one square centimeter of a hot body's surface emits a lot of energy per second, and the stars in the lower left corner of the diagram have low luminosity, we must conclude that they are small in size. Thus, white dwarfs are located at the lower left, very dense and compact stars, on average, 100 times smaller than the Sun, with diameter sometimes comparable to the diameter of our planet. I have a separate video about them. A little below are brown dwarfs, and the star we will talk about further belongs to brown dwarfs. Brown dwarfs are objects occupying an intermediate position between stars and gas giant planets. Like stars, brown dwarfs form from collapsing gas and dust clouds, but usually do not have enough mass to sustain stable hydrogen fusion reactions. The most massive of these objects can sustain reactions involving lithium, and less massive ones burn deuterium. According to one theory, unlike stars, brown dwarfs, at least during the main sequence phase, cannot compensate for energy loss through radiation, and relatively quickly cool down over time, turning into planet-like objects. Depending on the mass and age of a brown dwarf, the surface temperature varies from planetary to the temperature of the lower part of class M stars. In 2011, a group of scientists using new supersensitive telescopes discovered two new stars, one of which turned out to be the coldest known at that time. The authors of the new study observed a binary system located 75 light years away from us, consisting of two brown dwarfs. For a long time, scientists could not see the second component of the system, but with the help of the Keck telescope in Hawaii and very large telescopes in Chile, 
Astronomers were able to determine the distance between the two dwarfs and the temperature of the colder one. Scientists from the European Southern Observatory believe that the temperature of the colder star in the binary system is about 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit, and its mass is 6.15 times the mass of Jupiter. Now astronomers face a dilemma, how to classify this discovery. Before this, the record for the coldest star was held by the dwarf UGPS J0722-05, whose temperature does not exceed 287 degrees Celsius, 536 degrees Fahrenheit. At such temperatures, scientists believe the discovered brown dwarf could be significantly closer to cold exoplanets. In particular, they could have water vapor clouds in their atmosphere. However, after this discovery, astronomers from Penn State University discovered another unique object at a relative proximity to our solar system at a distance of 63 light years, the coldest known brown dwarf at that time. This star was named WD 0806661b. This object, discovered with the help of the Spitzer Infrared Orbital Telescope, is practically a cooled brown dwarf. Its temperature is only 30 degrees Celsius, or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Thus, theoretically, water could exist in a liquid state on its surface. The mass of the celestial body is only seven times the mass of Jupiter, so it could easily be classified as a gas giant planet, if not for one circumstance. This star is located at a distance of two and a half thousand astronomical units from the nearest star, which means it is 2,500 times farther than Earth is from the Sun, so it couldn't be heated by it. Therefore, this object is a star. Just imagine a star whose temperature is lower than the temperature of a human body. However, hypothetically, in the future, there will be even colder stars, black dwarfs. To learn what they are, be sure to watch my video about white dwarfs. If you want to help a young astrophysical channel, then subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give it a thumbs up.